Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome back to the introductory econometrics course. Let's finish the last four problems at the end of chapter 16, simultaneous equations model. In the textbook, Introductory Econometrics, a modern approach, the seventh edition by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. Let's do problem five. A simple model to determine the effectiveness of condom usage on reducing sexually transmitted diseases among sexually active high school students is as follows. The model is at the school level. In part one, interpreting the preceding equation in a causal setters parabers fraction, what should be the sign of beta one? Beta one should be negative. Condom usage should reduce sexually transmitted diseases, holding other factors fixed. In part two, why might the infection rate and condom usage be jointly determined? On the one hand, the use of condoms results in a low infection rate. Condom usage has a negative effect on the infection. On the other hand, the students are more willing to use condoms if they are aware of a higher infection rate. The infection has a positive effect on the condom usage, so they are jointly determined. In part three, if condom usage increases with the rate of venereal disease, gamma-1 is positive in the following equation. What is the likely bias in estimating beta-1 by OLS? We can prove that the OLS estimate of beta-1 is biased and inconsistent. To show that, we can use a simplified simultaneous equations model. We write the infection rate y1 and the condom usage y2. Using the matrix notation, we can show that the OLS estimator beta 1 hat is upward biased if gamma 1 is positive. In our case, beta 1 is negative, so the OLS estimate is biased towards zero. The condom usage effect on infection is underestimated. In part 4, let condom distribution be a binary variable equal to unity if a school has a program to distribute condoms. Explain how this can be used to estimate beta 1 and the other betas by IV. What do we have to assume about condom distribution in each equation? In the reduced form equation for condom usage, the instrument relevance requirement is that alpha should not be zero. That is, the distribution has a partial effect on the usage. It can be verified in the first stage regression. The instrument exogeneity requirement is that the condom distribution should not be correlated with the error term mu1 in the equation for infection rate, or the condom distribution should not directly affect the infection. Let's solve problem 6. Consider a linear probability model for whether employers offer a pension plan based on the percentage of workers belonging to a union, as well as other factors. In part 1, why might the percentage of workers belonging to a union be jointly determined with pension? On the one hand, 
employers consider whether to offer a pension based on the percentage of workers belonging to a union. On the other hand, employees determine whether to join the union based on whether they receive a pension. There is a simultaneous causality. In part two, suppose that you can survey workers at firms and collect information on workers' families. Can you think of information that can be used to construct an IV for whether belonging to a union? We can collect information on the workers' parents, such as whether their parents were union members. We use the percentage of parents belonging to a union as an instrumental variable for the percentage of workers belonging to a union. In part three, how would you test whether your variable is at least a reasonable IV candidate? We can verify the instrumental relevance requirement from the first stage regression of the endogenous explanatory variable, the percentage of workers belonging to a union, on the excluded exogenous variable, the percentage of workers' parents belonging to a union, and the other exogenous variables in the model. The excluded instrumental variable should have a significant partial effect to become a valid IV. We can do a t-test or an f-test for that. Let's do problem seven. For a large university, you are asked to estimate the demand for tickets to women's basketball games. You can collect time series data over 10 seasons for a total of about 150 observations. One possible model is as follows. In part one, why is it a good idea to have a time trend in the equation? Because the time trend captures the change in attendance over time that cannot be explained by the explanatory variables in the model. In part two, the supply of tickets is fixed by the stadium capacity. Assume this has not changed over the 10 years. This means that the quantity supply does not vary with the price. Does this mean that price is necessarily exogeneity in the demand equation? No, the price could still be correlated with the error term mu. In part three, suppose that the nominal price of admission changes slowly. Say, at the beginning of each season, the ASTIC office chooses price based partly on last season's average attendance as well as last season's team success. Under what assumptions is last season's winning percentage a valid instrumental variable? for this season's price. According to the instrument relevance requirement, last season's winning percentage should be correlated with this season's price, which can be verified in the first stage regression. The exclusion restriction assumption or the instrument exogeneity requirement states that Last season's winning percentage should not be correlated with the current error term mu or directly affect this season's attendance. In part 4, does it seem reasonable to include the log of the real price of men's basketball games in the equation? Explain. What sign does economic theory predict for its coefficient? 
Can you think of another variable related to men's basketball that might belong to the women's attendance equation? The coefficient on the price of men's basketball games should be positive, suggesting that a higher price leads to a more attendance because the men's and the women's basketball games are substitutes. The winning percentage of the men's basketball team is another explanatory variable in the women's attendance equation. In part 5, if you are worried that some of the series, particularly the log of attendance and the log of price, have unit rules, how might you change the estimated equation? We can use the first difference variables in the model. In part 6, if some games are sold out, what problems does this cause for estimating the demand function? If the game is sold out, the demand is censored by the stadium's capacity. The actual demand is not observed. Let's find answers to problem 8. How big is the effect of per student school expenditures on local housing values? Let house price be the median housing price in a school district and let expand be per student expenditures. Using panel data for the years 1992, 1994 and 1996, we postulate the following model. Expenditures and housing prices are simultaneously determined because the value of homes directly affects the revenues available for funding schools. Suppose that in 1994, the way schools were funded was drastically changed. Rather than being raised by local property taxes, school funding was largely determined at the state level. Let log state allocation denote the log of the state allocation for District I in year T, which is exogenous in the preceding equation once we control for expenditures and a district fixed effect. How would you estimate the betas? We can use the data for the years 1994 and 1996. We first difference the model to remove the district fixed effects. Then we use the log state allocation as an instrumental variable for the per student expenditures and employ the two stage least squares estimation. Thank you so much for doing the problems with me. See you soon in the computer exercises. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.